Cześć, dzień dobry. Hi, welcome. Magda Kopaczewska, Investor Relations uh, LPG and Przemysław Lutkiewicz, uh, Vice President of the Board. We'd like to welcome you to our results conference where we will discuss our financial results uh, for the fourth quarter and for um, the whole year increasingly. And we will also uh, talk about uh, corporate events uh, that happened since our last meeting and we'll, we will tell you also about our plans for the future. Um, it will be finalized by the Q&A session as usual. Let's start with uh, Przemek's account of uh, the events. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the key corporate events in the last quarter were the debut of our uh, Cinse stores in the markets of the Southern Europe. In Italy, we opened our first store in December last year. Uh, it was close to Venice, quite a large uh, store. We wanted uh, the first stores to be a bit bigger than the standard ones, about 1,000 uh, square meters, for the very purpose of the great debut um, ability to present full collection and the shopping experience at the highest value of the clients. Um, I can also um, boast that we opened the second store in Milan for Cinse and our presence uh, of online and uh, offline is already available for the customers in Italy. In the next quarter, new openings are planned uh, for this brand, but also for reserved in Italy. Another element of our strategy, Southern Europe, we opened in January this year, our first store of Cinse in Greece, uh, in Crete. Very good sales results, very good reception for this collection. We saw that the Greek market uh, receives our products very well. In the second quarter last year, we saw that the sales results were promising. So we can observe that the online and offline channels are prospering very well in this country and we are waiting of course for the opening of further stores in this country. Online of course is um, all about novelties and this is the requirement of the time so new algorithms, uh, artificial intelligence. I would like to tell you about one tool that we implemented in 2022 already but at the end of 2022, we uh, had some figures and we knew how to use this tool better. This is the dynamic yield tool. Uh, it basically prompts and recommends uh, products to the customer. Thanks to this tool, we can recommend products which we know for a certain historic shopping um, data that the customer might like. We can propose similar styles. Uh, to the ones that the customer was uh, interested in but are sold out currently and simply we can um, give tips to the customers um, about the products that would match the previously purchased products or the products currently in the cart. We can observe first good results of this and this allows us to increase um, the um, amount of, uh, of cart uh, products by customer. Uh, online channel is very important to us. On the left hand side on the slide, you can see that one third of the whole Mojito, online, uh, Mojito sales is via online channel. Also for uh, Cinse, it's over 30% and reserved almost 30% uh, in the fourth quarter of the whole sale um, was done uh, via the um, e-commerce channel. E-commerce also entails logistics solutions, so we can boast that in January 2023 we launched a new fulfillment uh, center warehouse um, solely for e-commerce purposes in Yashanka near Rzeszu. It's our own warehouse. We transferred the operations uh, to this warehouse from the one that was rented before. It was in Strykov. So the, the rented one in Strykov um, finished its operations and the uh, activity is continued uh, near Rzeszów. So thanks to that, we have 69,000 square meter floor space in this warehouse. So 17% of the whole warehouse space we uh, own in total. I will discuss this further in um, next slides, how logistics um, is important. But now let's discuss uh, the fashion collections and Magda, please present. After 2020, 2021, uh, which changed our uh, fashion uh, fashion uh, preferences to home and casual. 2022, because of the return to the offices and meetings, um, gave us the increase in popularity of more formal collections. 
here the two brands, Mojito and Reserved, are perfectly fitting this trend uh, because they focused on a very toned uh, color scheme and uh, the return of classic forms. We are very pleased with the sales results of the men's result, uh, Reserved collection. Very good sales results. Um, they are the fact um, rooted in this higher quality, the models, the changes in the structure of the collection. Thanks to that, the part of this men uh, collection for reserved in this um, season of autumn winter uh, generated 20% of the results. So it was 2% uh, better than uh, the previous year. Thanks to matching the collections to the current trends, uh, good sales results were also recorded um, in Mojito, especially in the online channel and especially abroad. Along with the financial report, as usual, every year we are publishing our sustainability report. This is the non-financial report and um, it is the same um, this year. We included such information as beginning the cooperation with a, a startup for full recycling of polyester um, fabrics or cooperation with an institute that would allow us to, um, to have recycling of the blends. That is now a big problem in the fashion um, industry. We also described there the project that we launched um, concerning um, the wind energy that is powering our facilities. We also devoted one chapter to uh, our uh, carbon footprint in all three scopes, which was in effect uh, limited by 8% this year. But also the report focuses on our activities in the social sphere, also uh, for Ukraine. So uh, we recommend highly to, to read it. You can um, access this via our website. And now, Przemek, uh, over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, as regards Ukraine, as you remember, at the beginning of last year, the war started. We closed all our stores uh, in Ukraine and we suspended all operations. But, uh, of course, the organizational uh, structures and personnel were kept. We, um, of course, paid our employees because we wanted, we wished the war to be over. But unfortunately, the war was not, um, not over quickly. It's still ongoing. But in the third quarter, we had um, a lot of signals from the employees from Ukraine that they would like to uh, reop have the stores reopened. They want to have um, normal life. Of course, it's still dangerous. We still have uh, bomb alerts. However, Ukraine is trying to function uh, as normal as possible in these difficult war conditions. So gradually, from the third quarter on, we started to open uh, new stores, first in the safer areas, and then going to the east of the country. Of course, because of the warfare, we lost uh, 34 stores. Before the war, we had 159 uh, stores. Now we have 125 operating stores. Of course, they operate uh, in a limited capacity. If there are alarms, uh, bomb alarms, um, we have uh, the employees going to the safe, um, safe places. So in general, we are still looking after our employees and security and safety is a priority. But uh, in the e-commerce and opening stores, we can say that the performance is very, very well. Uh, we have high, um, high sales results. The competition is lower in this country. Logistics is, um, is uh, going on as usual. We have um, normal supplies coming from Poland to Ukraine. We are hoping for the warfare to end, but we are looking at this uh, market thinking that we want to start development in the safest locations, opening new stores. We are talking about um, a few locations. We will see how this progresses. But generally, we want uh, to do a lot in this country because this helps uh, the local economy as well. Uh, let's have a look at the map with our presence. Uh, it's uh, greener and greener. As you can see, uh, we mark with this color the countries where we have both online and offline offer. 
At the end of last year, we opened uh, an online store in Serbia. Therefore, this country was marked green. And as I announced, we opened the stores, the stationery stores in Italy and Greece. And also these two countries uh, were marked green this time. Poland is still our biggest market, over a thousand stores. But we are focusing strongly on Romania, Bulgaria or Serbia. I will discuss this further in a moment. On the left hand side, you can see the chart where we present the number of stores. It decreased by 282 stores. We sold the Russian business over 500 stores. But in Poland and abroad, uh, it's dynamically developing uh, over, 60, uh, over 60 stores more in Poland and abroad over 200 stores. So now we are focusing on other countries apart from Poland to saturate the market where we have those opportunities. Uh, the development plans will be discussed um, in a few moments um, about our outlook for 2023. Let's move on to financial results for the fourth quarter. Let me just remind you that um, the selling of Russian business changed um, the financial statements, which means that we started um, displaying the continued uh, operations in 2021 to compare uh, likes for likes and apples to apples. At the end of our um, report, we have the discontinued operations and there we present only the results for the Russian company until it was uh, consolidated. So by the end of the second quarter of last year. Looking at the continued operations, we operate in 39 countries, offline and online. 16 billion revenues for the group for last year. This means a 40% more in continued operations. We had 1,962 stores and um, less floor space uh, by 11, uh, over 11%. So this gap uh, after selling the Russian business hasn't been filled yet, but we are hoping that our development plans will allow for uh, supplementing it and we will have even more floor space at the end of 2023. We can see also that the customers are more willing to go from online to offline, a good 16% increase like for like. And online, of course, uh, it is increasing quarter to quarter, a bit less, but generally for the year we uh, recorded over 90% of increase in revenue. Let's move on to revenue over 4 billion lotter for revenues in the fourth quarter uh, itself. On the left hand side, you can see that all brands um, had uh, two double digit growths, 23% increase overall. Of course, Mojito is worth uh, focusing, 33.9% increase. It was dynamically developing, especially in online uh, and in Southern Europe. The second brand that I would like to highlight here is of course Sinsei brand. This is the brand that has the most stores openings and the floor space is increasing um, the most dynamically. So here 28% increase. Sinsei sells more than reserved at the moment over um, 1.5 billion in Sinsei and a, a few billion more than reserved. So we are happy with the performance of all our brands in the fourth quarter good double digit growths as magda said uh, good collections for mojito in reserved indicate that we are able to grow in both distribution channels but the stores um, the stationery stores have recorded better results uh, online sale over 1 billion e-commerce revenues last year looking at this uh, right hand side chart where we divided into poland and abroad you can see that in Poland, there's an increase for online, but slight decrease abroad. Why? Because we started to spend um, less money on performance marketing, so buying clicks um, with the biggest operators, biggest companies abroad like Facebook, Google, that cause that we have new customers. 
it appeared that the new countries are not uh, necessarily coming back. So the brand recognition needs to be um, needs to be strongly worked on. So we decrease uh, we decrease the outlays on this, and we are pushing more uh, up, uh, our applications, our mobile applications that we have uh, for reserved and for for Cincy right now. With these two applications, we are going abroad. Uh, it's uh, not only Poland, uh, Germany, Romania, also Czech Republic, uh, Hungary and Slovakia in the first quarter of this year. So we decided to focus more on developing and uh, convincing our customers to uh, move to our applications uh, to uh, generate conversions. And this is successful. So we will save considerably on performance marketing but we want uh, this um, profitability of this online channel to increase this year, which is already observed. Applications are all the more important that 45% uh, percent of the whole revenue in Poland for the two brands uh, has been generated uh, via mobile applications. We can say in general, um, we, and we have been saying that, uh, that the mobile devices constitute 70% of the whole um, of the whole um, visits and um, purchases is done via mobile devices. We want, of course, to develop our applications uh, in uh, enter and roll out uh, these applications in further markets. This is easier and easier. So in the further quarters, we will announce a further development or entering a new market uh, for our applications. Now, um, revenues uh, divided by Poland and abroad increasingly uh, higher um, abroad. It means that we have uh, more revenues abroad. Over 60% uh, was generated abroad in the fourth quarter of this year. On the right hand side, you can see the table where we have the floor space. It decreased by 11% year on year because we um, have no Russian stores anymore. In Poland, we have 11% uh, increase, double digit increase. Still, we have room for development in Poland, especially for Cincy stores. So smaller cities, retail parks or locations by the streets. Uh, we are focusing and saturating the market more in this regard. But on the other hand, it is abroad uh, that uh, is the driving force. We have been um, developing uh, faster. It was nearly 30% uh, in floor space. The square meters that we have abroad are considerably higher than uh, in Poland. So the uh, foreign markets, Southern Europe, these are the places where we are entering uh, the fastest right now because they give us uh, the biggest rate of return. They become profitable very, off very quickly and the location of capital is, uh, the most, um, makes the most sense. Uh, margin, it was lower year on year, as you can see in the chart, you can observe how great it was uh, in the fourth quarter of last year, over 60%. We had like a shopping craze in that uh, moment after two years of lockdown and uh, buying online, the customers uh, wanted to return to physical stores, so it was possible to sell a lot in full prices. That's why the margins were so good last year. This year, as you can see, we have uh, 50, 52 percent in this kind of range, which is the result of a few elements. First of all, it's a lot of inventory that we bought uh, at the beginning of last year, uh, quite ahead for the Eastern market. And then we had to liquidate uh, and uh, put into other markets. On the other hand, there was unfavorable um, foreign exchange for dollar and freight costs and expansion of Cince that it has lower margins than the remaining brands and we have this dilution of the margin by the fact that we have a lot more Cince stores but let's not worry about this it's also lower costs for Cince so we will focus on this in the further quarters I will uh, talk about a bit more um, in the next quarters and this is increasing on the right hand side you can see our inventory Last year, they were too high uh, for the reasons I outlined just a second ago, but uh, they are decreasing quarter to quarter. Uh, in the fourth quarter, we can observe a further decrease comparing to the third one. It's still uh, over 3 billion slot, it's still too high. 
in the coming uh, just-in-time um, regime and with better management, we will focus on rotation of goods and um, limiting this uh, inventory level. As you can see, the line uh, per square meters it's decreasing as well, 2,000 lotte per square meter for the last quarter. We wish uh, to move towards this uh, 1,500 in the coming quarter, so we will work on uh, decreasing uh, this and to manage the stock uh, as uh, good as possible to release the capital that we have uh, still in this, this working capital. What is good is that uh, most of the collection, three-fourths, uh, as you can see for the fourth uh, uh, collection, this is uh, the spring-summer collection. So it is prepared or it was purchased uh, for the new season. Let's move on to costs. The cost, despite inflation, uh, we managed to stabilize the costs. As you know, our company can save, uh, save money and have very much control over the costs when the macroeconomic situation is less favorable. And it happened exactly like this. Um, but results for uh, December, we wanted to uh, control the costs more. So from the fourth quarter, we can observe quite low costs when it comes to stores. SGNA in total, even lower. An increase. Uh, a decrease uh, for the in comparison to the fourth quarter of last year. What happened here? When we look at um, what constitutes the costs, so the rental costs here, uh, we have uh, more since stores, better conditions um, for the previous contracts. Of course, right now there is an element, uh, a quite special one. So from the fourth quarter on. What started is the um, is the revaluation of rentals, especially those in euros. So we have inflation um, indexation. We can expect in the further quarters that the rental costs will increase. Because the cost increase, we uh, decided to have more control and better control of uh, personnel costs. We have new uh, technologies like RFID clips that uh, save um, the work uh, workforce. So we don't need uh, so much um, working hours of the personnel. And we are more flexible in terms of management of um, working schemes. So to decrease the working hours used to service the customer at the store. The third element, uh, the other costs, I think the biggest element of this is, of course, energy use. This energy use, as we know, this uh, the cost has been increasing uh, a lot. Uh, we have most of our stalls um, with meters installed to decrease the use of uh, energy and water consumption. These increases in energy uh, costs are not uh, so uh, troublesome. So the costs are stable year on year. Overall, the cost per square meters in stores, it's only 2% increase year on year, despite this uh, higher inflation. On the right hand side, you can see overall SGNA costs per square meter. They are lower year on year. As a company, we are focusing strongly on cost to revenues, this percentage um, percentage of sales. Our aim is for them not to um, not to get higher than the forty percent, and we have forty percent for the fourth quarter uh, of this. Last year it was a forty eight percent, as you can see. So we are saving, especially when it comes to e commerce, uh, the marketing uh, expenditure uh, is lower. And this year, we will also continue that. Uh, the changes in logistics that have been happening, they always allow us to save considerably um, when it comes to the cost. Let's move on uh, to profit and loss account, the fourth quarter. We are comparing, of course, uh, 2022 with the continued operations from the previous year. 
So likes for likes, as you can see, we have 23 increase in revenues year on year, but the margin was considerably lower. That's why we focused so much on the cost uh, elements. And as you can see, SGNA costs, uh, they have a 2% increase only. Thanks to that, we have a bit uh, over 400 million lot, uh, so considerably better than the previous year. But in the previous year, of course, uh, we had uh, write-offs, especially uh, for the stores in Ukraine. They were quite considerable. So this data has to be looked, uh, from this, looked at from this perspective that last year we had um, the special uh, write-offs. On the financial side, we had uh, quite high negative uh, FX um, uh, exchanges, FX losses because of the stronger lot, and um, this resulted from uh, our Russian uh, subsidiary uh, receivables. This is expressed in, um, in US dollars. So in the fourth quarter, we um, had um, negative uh, FX uh, differences. Therefore, net financial activity lower than expected, um, 200 million lot in the fourth quarter of last year. Now let's move on to the profit, almost 16 um, billion of uh, sales, more uh, year on year, a bit decreased um, in margin for the reasons I outlined and the cost that uh, increased uh, over 30%. We are happy that they, uh, the increase is uh, slower than the increase in uh, sales. Almost one um, billion and a half of slots of EBIT. Last year we had these uh, write-offs related to Ukraine. If we look at, uh, if you want to compare this without the write-offs, it would be comparable um, operating profit. When we uh, have foreign exchange differences uh, taken out of this, we have continued operations net profit uh, over one, uh, only one, uh, almost one billion slot per last year. It was a difficult year for us because of the warfare and the loss of 30% of business, but nevertheless, we managed uh, to um, get out of this situation with uh, stability and looking at what is still to be improved. Uh, let me discuss uh, working capital. We need to work on this element a little bit. Working capital what you have seen in many quarters uh, before the war, we had the situation that working capital was uh, negative. It means that uh, it was higher than uh, inventory. Our liabilities were high, uh, uh, higher. So we paid for the goods, but we haven't sold the goods yet. As you can see here on the right-hand side, uh, our trade liabilities were lower than uh, inventories. This has been changing. We are working on changing this situation. We want the inventories to be lower to improve rotation by um, splitting uh, the deliveries, the just-in-time deliveries when they are needed and not ahead of time. So in the next quarters, it should normalize. On the other hand, there is a lot of stock that we already paid for, therefore lower use and of reverse uh, factoring. It's now 1.5 billion slotte and the limits are 3.3 billion. In the next quarters we will be coming back to the norm using this um, using the uh, reverse factoring financing more so that working capital can come back to normal. So our trade liabilities are higher than inventories. There is this element of receivables, the short-term receivables. When we had this uh, transaction of selling the Russian uh, stores, there we have about 800 million lot uh, inventory for the balance sheet date, and uh, they have been repaid uh, gradually. Uh, 0 0.2 billion lot uh, of repayment during the quarter. This will improve our cash flow. And on the right hand side, you can see that the cash uh, conversion cycle 
is a bit worse. Therefore, we had a negative uh, cycle, cash conversion cycle. Now it's um, positive eight days, but in the next quarter, we are able to improve this situation to go back to the norm. And the norm, as I said, is um, the negative working capital. When it comes to indebtedness level, it is safe. We are publishing for you and we are displaying here net uh, indebtedness with IFRS uh, 16, 4.8 billion zloty is quite high, but uh, almost 4 billion is due to uh, use of um, debt uh, for the finance leases under IFRS 16. So uh, according to the old methodology, it's quite uh, lower. So we have cash that is not uh, included and this cash uh, has been invested um, in the money market funds denominated in dollar. And this uh, part is making money for us and we are using part of this amount uh, for this um, as securing the reverse factoring. Because we use a lot less of the limits um, in the fourth quarter, there were a lot of um, deposits uh, and they were returned. So they were pure cash um, that we can use to invest directly and to manage directly. On the right hand side, you can see our CAPEX, over 300 uh, million lot of uh, CAPEX in the fourth quarter. Over 200 million were about opening new stores and uh, almost 90 million zloty was, was concerning IT and other investments. Summing up the targets uh, all the last year and uh, looking at what we have achieved from the targets, we can say that we are pleased with the effects of our work and we are pleased with the fact uh, that uh, we can show you Mm, our achievements of the targets in terms of figures 16 billion uh, revenues this is what we announced uh, that we wanted to work out we also discussed uh, about rebuilding floor space but trying to fill the gap after selling the russian stores so we have 1960 stores we were planning even two stores uh, less so this has been achieved. At the beginning of the year, we announced uh, that we want to have uh, 5 billion um, revenues in online sales. This, uh, of course, was reduced gradually. 4.5 billion uh, e-commerce sales was announced uh, recently. And because, of course, of the cuts in marketing, we had 4.4 billion slot uh, of online sales, but we consider this to be achieved. When it comes to a bit margin, we were planning, we wanted to achieve 8-9% uh, of EBIT margin and we have even better 9.2% EBIT margin. So this target has also been achieved and CAPEX, we were planning 1.1 billion slot. We had a bit more uh, 1.2 billion slot of capital and expenditures, but these are good investments that will um, give better results in the future. So summing up the targets, we are pleased with the results of these difficult years. Let's move on to the outlook and our plans. Starting off with um, the latest results for the first quarter. The first quarter, I would say we are moderate optimists. On the one hand, we see that the customer is a demanding one. The customer expects to have a good product in attractive, at attractive prices. And what we have observed after uh, raising the prices, the customers in uh, reserved or mojito brands, they accepted uh, the higher prices. However, when it comes to Synthe, so the value for money segment brand, uh, the situation was a bit different. The new prices introduced in February and March, they were not uh, met with a positive reception from the customers. So let's we decided to make a change. We uh, did an experiment and it was worth doing to check uh, the market. So the value for market, um, this is very price sensitive. 
so we returned to lower prices for Sinsei, like last year. We have high demand and Sinsei has been performing very well. Now, taking into account that Sinsei is the biggest brand and the most contributor to our EBIT um, result. So with lower prices in Sinsei, the margins will be a bit lower than expected. But uh, in turn, we have lower costs in this brand. This is a different business model. And the cost of rentals, uh, floor space, uh, all the operations are different. So we will be focusing more on the uh, operating um, margin that will be improving in the coming quarter. So from this perspective, uh, rest assured, the experiments on prices, this is a good thing because we should be doing that. We are able to quickly react if something is not going uh, as planned. Now we have very good result in all our brands and a strict control of costs which will be maintained in the coming quarters as well. Uh, floor space is increasing 20% uh, year on year according to plan. We opened 90 stores in the first quarter and for this year we have a plan of opening 380 stores so similar number of stores opening every quarter so we are uh, in line with our plans. Offline sales has been increasing um, 25% uh, increase year on year. So the continuation of the trend that customers um, want to buy offline more willingly than um, online. We want to open new stores. We want to have more stores to uh, meet the demands um, expressed by the customers. Online sales, um, it will be stable uh, year on year. We have been working on profitability of this part of business and on the fact that uh, we want to use the customer base that we already have in several, uh, con uh, several brands that we own. So we want to focus on this part to improve um, the uh, profitability, to keep on working on reducing inventory so that this comes back to normal. And let me repeat again, strict control of costs which aims at uh, increasing EBIT in terms of value and percentage. Now on this map, I wanted to show you the regions of Europe that we are focusing uh, most, the Southern Europe, so new um, Italian and Greek markets, but also the markets that we have been present for some time that have been performing well, which means Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, but also uh, Croatia, Bosnia and, Her and uh, Slovenia. So we focus uh, there on Sinsei store openings. You can see uh, in this uh, upper um, part that we are planning to open uh, new uh, stores, uh, over 100 of Sinsei brands among these 150 new stores. We will be opening new stores in Greece and Italy. We are um, hoping for the dynamic rollout in these countries. Uh, we are not forgetting the online, of course. In Bosnia and Herzegovina, we will will open uh, the online store in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we opened such a store in Serbia and we are very pleased with the results of that store. So our e-commerce expansion is planned outside the EU. You can see here our targets for uh, increasing um, in the future. On the left hand side, we display that we want to have 2 million um, square meters at the end of this year. So the first 20 years of operations, we opened 1 million. And now in the five uh, years to come, we want to um, accelerate this higher vo volumes than before. So the 2 million um, meters that we marked as the target for the January of 2024. These are the contracts we have already signed. Our lease uh, departments, they are working on um, the 2024 leases. So as you can see, this uh, January 2024 target, the vast majority of that has uh, the, those contracts have already been signed. But this is a dream, but verified one uh, and with uh, concrete figures uh, included in the signed contract. So from today's perspective, we can see that the coming years uh, 10 to 15% increase we are able to achieve. 
Now, moving on to this chart on the left hand side, Poland, 12% increase. We have been recording double digit growth in, growth in our countries, but the majority of investment and the majority of the stores will be opened abroad, 25% year on year of increase in floor space. These are the stores that uh, give uh, that we have very good uh, business cases. The rate of return is no longer than 24 months or two years. So uh, we, will, uh, we are trying to allocate our capital in the places where we have uh, the most benefits. And for now, this is outside Poland, especially in the Southern Europe. For that, we need logistics, of course, and uh, the access and the ability to deliver the goods uh, in uh, proper times um, to the customers who buy online, but also to the stores. On the left hand side, you can see three most important countries when it comes to logistics, of course, Poland, Romania, but also Slovakia. There have been a lot of changes in logistics. We focus strongly on Romania. For some time now, we have had a fulfillment center operating there that uh, is uh, servicing the online sales. It has been performing very well. So we decided uh, to open a logistics center in that country for stationary stores as well to deliver the stores not only uh, from that uh, center, not only to Romania, but also other countries in Southern Europe. So moving forward, um, we want supply to change as well. So. So far, all the containers with our uh, goods, they went through the Baltic Sea from Asia to the Baltic Sea and then the Gdańsk port. And from there, they are distributed uh, throughout Europe. But now part of these goods will go to the Black Sea, to Romanian ports. And from there, they will be delivered to Romanian uh, warehouse and distributed uh, to Southern Europe. Benefits uh, shortened times of delivery by a week, about a week, and a lower transportation cost because we have a shorter route of the container um, giving a lower cost. This is one of the initiatives that uh, we have been uh, already implementing to reduce the logistics cost. Second initiative is moving logistics center, uh, centers that used to be outsourced to our own locations. That's what happened in Strykov. We closed this outsourced warehouse and the external operator was servicing it. We moved it to Yashonka near Zeshov and we have an, our own warehouse there and our company, uh, LPP Logistics, have be, has been operating there, which gives us uh, savings for the logistics uh, cost. Another element, uh, the warehouse that we have near Bratislava we decided to uh, keep it. This is a leased one, but the external operator that has been uh, managing it uh, on our behalf, it uh, was replaced with our own structures. So we have our own structure introduced, our own employees, and uh, we can save uh, on operating costs there. It's comparable, but it's... Um, the effect of scale uh, for the coming months. We will be able to use the floor space. We have uh, more efficient operations. So our own logistics company will bring us considerable uh, cost savings. The target overall for the 2023, 2024, uh, of course, first and foremost, growth in profitability in the difficult times where we have been reading about slowdown in the economy, we have been observing the cautious behaviors of the customer. As a company, we should also present a cautious approach. We uh, need to invest where the investment brings benefits, but we should uh, focus on our cost and profitability uh, very strongly. So of course, revenues are important. We will be growing faster off, uh, offline than online. We want to have this 25% increase year on year uh, offline. And thanks to the positive uh, like for likes. So these will be stable year on year these, um, in the online section. We will focus on the effect, cost effectiveness uh, online so that uh, the profitability is increased. So the group revenues should reach 18 billion lot this year. 
gross profit margin should be a bit higher than last year, 51.3%. But what I want to focus on and uh, to focus your attention on is our EBIT. EBIT should be uh, over 10% because we have two uh, business concepts. On the one hand, we have uh, more expensive brands like Reserved, Mojito, which have higher margins, but we have been developing since they with lower margin um, and with lower costs. So the mixture of the two business models, looking at this, we should focus uh, most on EBIT margin. When it comes to the savings uh, that are considerable, logistics and performance marketing, especially performance marketing, this is quite uh, easy to stop uh, this expenditure. We will spend half uh, less money on that. But there is also considerable savings in terms of logistics, thanks to all the um, activities that I have uh, outlined already. Um, CAPEX over 1 billion slot, uh, similarly to last year, uh, out of which 800 million uh, are investments uh, for stores. Of course, we want, by increasing profitability and managing the working capital and cash well, we want to have uh, lower uh, debt year on year and uh, to have our targets met. Of course, we observe that there are some risks and opportunities related. The risks um, is the economic slowdown on the, uh, and the inflation on the purchasing behaviors of our clients and their uh, shopping, um, shopping behaviors. The better, the better management of online sales, new store openings in many countries. This will, on the other hand, allow us to address uh, the customer's needs. And we can see that our brands are well positioned. Uh, what I mean here is that the pricing levels, even in our most expensive brands, this is the moderate uh, price. But the value for money segment that has been increasing uh, quickly, it allows us to offer, um, to offer the lower budget customers also good value for money and attractive uh, styles at good prices. The last slide for this presentation, ladies and gentlemen, dividend payment. Yesterday, the board proposed dividend payment in the amount of 430 per share. We want to um, pay out in the two tranches um, in July and October and 215 per share each tranche. Uh, this is all we prepared for today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and let's start the Q&A session. Yes, we do have a lot of questions, very interesting questions. Let's start with several ones concerning uh, the distribution center in Romania. Where exactly in Romania are you planning to open a new distribution center? Pap is uh, writing about the second half of the year as the opening. Can you give us a more precise date? The stores from which countries will be serviced? by this uh, distribution center and what is the estimate uh, impact for the transportation cost and delivery times change uh, because of this opening in Romania? Will this opening also mean more intense opening of stores in the countries serviced by the center? That's a long question. Let me maybe repeat. Okay, I think I remember all. I don't uh, want to give you a precise date. You know how it is with such big projects. Uh, this can be accelerated or delayed. The second half of the year, I think, is the um, good estimation. It will be near Bucharest. This is the first thing. I wouldn't like to discuss specifically the savings and the benefits from this project, but in general, the cost savings from resulting from all the logistics changes for this year are estimated at the level of 150, 200 million zloty, so quite considerable. Uh, what stores and countries, of course, apart from Romania, Bulgaria, but also Greece, Italy, and uh, ex-Yugoslavian countries, the southern um, East, southern Europe. This uh, is the region we want to focus on most this year. So this is dedicated. Uh, this is these are the countries dedicated. 
a question about the plan to develop uh, physical stores. Where are you going to have the most openings and where are you planning to open uh, the least uh, number of stores? First of all, we are opening Sinsei brand. This means uh, retail park in smaller cities. So we will uh, not be opening in uh, big shopping malls, only uh, several dozen stores for this year's for reserved and uh, Mojito. But most uh, of the stores opening, it will be uh, smaller cities, as we discussed before, Southern Europe, Greece, uh, Italy, but also Romania, Bulgaria, uh, ex-Yugoslavian countries. We are not forgetting about the northern countries. Finland is uh, the market that we want to dynamically develop this year. But looking at the Western Europe, this year we are planning to uh, open three stores in London, one store in Germany and two reserved stores uh, in Milan on the main street. So despite the fact that we are focusing on this value for money segment, we are not forgetting about the flagship brand reserved. We want to um, build recognition of reserved in the Western market, but want to do it um, via online more. And uh, on the one hand, the um, stores with better uh, commercial terms and conditions should be profitable, but we are more cautious in this regard. In Germany, we have recorded profit after several years. This is encouraging, but still, when it comes to Western Europe, we have been very cautious. This is not the time to increase uh, on these markets a lot. The next question is about this reverse factoring. What is the reason for uh, decreasing engagement in reverse factoring? Which was negative. Uh, this was free cash flow with um, lower result in 2022. Has this inf instrument become too uh, expensive after um, the um, percentage uh, increase? What are the plans for the working capital let me start the, by saying that it's not too expensive for us as an instrument. Uh, the mm, suppliers pay for it, so the cost on the company end is uh, not significant. It's more organizational. On the other hand, uh, lower use is not the result of the fact that we don't like reverse factoring. We do, but it's due to the fact that last year we had a lot of goods purchased before, ahead of time, uh, for the Eastern market. We had paid for this, so the use of factoring uh, diminished, but we have been still selling the, the goods. So we have to normalize and sell out uh, the inventory, the surplus um, goods out of the turbulence, the resulting from turbulence on the Eastern market. Now we are uh, ordering new collections and the use of factoring month, uh, every month is increasing. So by the end of the year, we will be using all the factoring limits. This is what we're counting on. Uh, we will have a lot of uh, demand for financing. This is like temporary. We do like factoring. We will be using factoring. We will use our limits and we will come to the banks to ask for further limits. But for now, because of the turbulence we experienced and because of the uh, war outbreak, we, want, we need to deal with um, all those issues and the new um, new goods that ent are entering stalls, they will allow us to regulate the situation with working capital and to normalize the use of factoring. Another question is about why LPP is not counting the deposits to uh, indebtedness, net indebtedness. We would like to do that, but the standards of accounting say that we cannot. Is the decrease in online sale um, attributable to Sinsei, which means um, lower marketing, which uh, decreases operating costs and increases uh, profitability for the market? Can you repeat, please? Is the decrease in online sale uh, attributable to Sinsei brand, uh, which means um, less uh, outlets on marketing? When it comes to Sinsei revenues, this is good currently and will be very good. The fourth quarter was all the more difficult that because we had the surplus goods, we decided to 
not, not to order a part of the winter collection. So the structure of goods for Sinsei in the fourth quarter wasn't appropriate to what uh, and much to what the customer expected, but it allowed us to go out of turbulence with uh, inventory. Everything is coming back to normal. Everything is good. But the decision about marketing was not really uh, caused by Sinsei brand, but it was a general decision that marketing that is uh, currently uh, placed on, um, on the internet, we decided to focus on profitability of our business and not generating new markets. So all brands, Reserved, Sinsei, Mojito, Crop and House, all the brands, had a lower marketing budget for the fourth quarter and this uh, will be continued this year so profitability of our business of our e-commerce business has been increasing of course we have um, stable sales but this is what we are focusing now can you please discuss what is the offline dynamic for this brand uh, sensei I don't remember exactly, but considerable double digit increase uh, because of the floor space increases. We opened nearly 300 stores of Sinsei last year. Do you identify other reasons uh, why the budget uh, sales for the brand is um, different from other brands? The fourth quarter, uh, the changed um, the inadequate, inadequate structure of the uh, goods availability. This was due to our internal business decisions to stabilize uh, the working capital and inventory. Everything is coming back to normal. Sinsei has been selling more and more and we are pleased with their current results. From the first quarters, will we observe the uh, cash conversion cycle increase? Yes. Is hedging as part of reverse factoring will be slowing down the positive um, impact of the lower uh, dollar um, uh, foreign exchange rate. It was working um, until this Russian subsidiary uh, situation with um, conversion to dollars. We have a long pos we had long position in dollars and. Uh, in the fourth quarter, we had negative foreign exchange differences because of this dollar decrease, and this should get back to normal in the coming quarters. We will be able to match hedging and the level of liabilities to our uh, to the situation of dollars. Another question is very interesting. Question is about competitors. Will the shifting of Zara upwards um, cause that you will? you'll make decision about changing collections due to that communication. Let me explain this uh, shift upwards. It's about more expensive collections and more premium collections in the offer of Zara. When it comes to competitors, we are not uh, commenting on that. Uh, Inditex uh, and other competitors are very inspiring to us and important to us and also difficult to, um, to compete with. But generally, when competitors change the uh, price um, levels and it's upwards from our brands like Reserved Mojito and Sinsei, of course, this is to our benefit because it's difficult to uh, foresee the effect of that. But we will be more uh, competitive in terms of prices against our brands and we will have more traffic and more sales. So overall, this should be in plus for us, but it's very difficult to discuss scale. What are your plans for organizing um, the sales again in Ukraine and the store chain organization in Ukraine this year? Will this, be, um, will this have effect on margin? No, it, this impact will not be considerable. Five, six stores uh, to be opened this year. Of course, it all depends on the situation and on the warfare itself. If the war ended, of course, we would have more ambitious plans. But for now, only the few stores discussed. Uh, is there a chance for uh, reversing this policy on uh, performance marketing? If you notice that uh, uh, the price per, per click on the um, on the market is rationalized. That's a good question. 
but it means that if the price for the click uh, drops, other companies also will start using it. So the price will uh, increase again. Of course, we approach uh, the topic in, with flexibility. We will have a flexible approach. We have a budget, a marketing budget. Uh, we can increase the budget if uh, the margins and sales results uh, allow. On the other hand, we want to allocate this budget uh, in the markets where the return is highest. So where the click can be bought at the cheapest price. And uh, on the other hand, when the customer is attracted by the click, uh, we'll, we'll have conversion, like we'll stay with us for longer. So this is uh, it's difficult to answer that. You know that we will be reacting in a way that brings the best effect for the organizations. It will be markets outside of Poland where we will allocate this uh, budget. And we mean more Southern Europe markets. Due to this dilution of uh, costs per square meters for the stores and opening of Sinsei, this dynamic uh, of the cost, cost may not uh, um, exceed 5%. This is what we're hoping for, that the increases year on year will will be considerable. The increases in the pay of the minimum wage. We want the cost per square meter not to um, in, not to exceed 10 percent. The surplus, how much did it take out of the margin in the third and fourth quarter of 2022? In which quarter the problem of uh, uh, surplus will be um, solved. It's difficult to say between two to three points. On the other hand, it seems that in the first quarter of this year, 2023, this problem should disappear. What should be uh, the gross margin in particular quarters? How? What would be the model gross margin in particular quarters after you sell uh, after you sold this Russian um, subsidiary and without the surplus inventory? It's difficult to answer this question at this moment. I don't have the figures right now. What is the demand uh, in uh, German markets and in the UK? What is your plan for developing uh, in these markets? We can observe an increase in uh, sales positive like for likes and considerable increase in sales volume online uh, in both Germany and the UK. That's uh, why we decided to open new stores in those markets. It seems that the price levels that uh, Reserved is offering and because of the longer presence in these markets, this attracts customers. So. We want to focus more on online. However, the new store openings that we are op that we are having, we will be opening a store in Germany as well. We can see that uh, in those locations, online um, is also increasing. So the both channels they support um, e one another. We have moderate optimism when it comes to those markets, thanks to the increase uh, in uh, Germany. In online, this gives us profitability in this market. So uh, every year, every quarter, we will be looking at those markets more intensely and we will be investing, but rather online than offline. What is the planned quarterly dynamics for the openings for this year? More or less 90, 100 stores per quarter. So every quarter, 20% increase in floor space uh, looking year on year for the quarter of the previous uh, year. So in general, 20% increase. Looking at uh, how our construction departments work and a lot of uh, openings uh, at one uh, point, the plan is to basically spread this evenly. Last year, apart from the first quarter, the results were quite comparable. What can we expect this year? What is the planned uh, quarterly uh, distribution of results? I can say for sure that the second and third uh, quarters that were very good last year, 
Uh, this will be repeated probably this uh, year as well. They should be the best ones. The fir first and fourth ones um, will probably be a bit worse, especially in the fourth quarter. We have the January sales uh, almost the whole month, but we want to aim to uh, increase profitability every month in the value and percentage. Can you sum up the sales uh, of the Russian business? How much uh, have you received so far? What is the uh, scheme of repayments and is it going according to schedule? Uh, when we sold the Russian business, there are two elements. One element is the sale of uh, stores and then the sale of goods. The sale of goods, here we have this, uh, the payments uh, received every week. And every quarter, this um, is decreasing, of course. We have been monitoring that. We observe that it, this is incoming. The second aspect is the sale of stores. We lost 300 million lotus, so the receivable is 600 million lotus. This is uh, discounted to 300 because of the risk of the payer and of the country where the money comes from. So we haven't received any installments from that. This amount is to be paid for the stores sold in Russia. This is for the fourth year, uh, four year installments. The first uh, 2023 uh, December installment will show us what the situation is. Uh, for now, we can see, uh, we are pleased that the goods receivables are being received. When it comes to EBIT margin, what is the trend that you're expecting in the coming years, um, taking into account the change in the uh, structure of sales? We will be, uh, we will be working hard uh, for the coming quarters uh, to have EBIT margin over 10%. We are looking at the best in our um, industry where these uh, values are much higher. So it seems that we can do more and we want to have um, over 10% uh, from EBIT uh, in the coming years, along with the development, uh, with the effective scale and perfecting logistics solutions and good cost discipline and also good sales and increase in the margins. It seems that the gross uh, margin should half a point, uh, one point, percentage point increase every year. As a result of lack of acceptance of increased prices by the consumers, uh, the prices returned to the level uh, also for uh, only for Sincer or also for other brands. Will you keep increasing prices in other brands than Sincer? The change in prices and return to the previous pricing policy in Sincer. Uh, this is not uh, about other brands. It they are they have higher prices. We are not. Uh, uh, we are not planning any further increases. We want the prices to be attractive for the customer. Uh, we have high demand uh, in Sinsei brand, but with also um, sensitivity towards price increases. So we want to offer attractive uh, goods at attractive prices and in the end to so have a bit margin uh, over 10% overall. That was the last question. Thank you very much for all of those questions. We want to say goodbye now and invite you to the next uh, results conference in June and wish you a good May weekend. Thank you so much. See you next time.